Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Drake Reload Snowboard Binding. I rode this binding at Copper Mountain on a sunny bluebird day, average temps, midday corduroy, chop, chunder, push mounds, little heavy snow in spots, and I rode it on my ride shadow band with my K2 Thraxxus boots. All right, so let's talk about the straightforward binding adjustability on this. What you do have is flip tabs on the toe and heel strap, pop them up, untwist them, lengthen or shorten, tighten it back down, flip them down, and you're good to go. You do get a dual pin system on the toe ladder and strap to just slide it forward or backwards. You do have three placements on the high back so you can rotate it as well as the forward lean adjustment. Finally, the heel cup is adjustable with two screws on the side. Unscrew them, pull it out, push it in, depending where you need to be. And the toe ramp has three placements so you can push it a little more forward or a little more back just to center it underneath your boot. When it comes to the straps, you have foam and rubber mixed for the toe strap with this weird cutout, which I still don't know what boot shape is designed to really fit in there other than possibly a North Wave. But it does grip when you finally get it set right. It took me a while to get that thing dialed in. And even then, still isn't the best toe strap I've been on. The heel strap is Drake's take on a more minimalist design with a big cutout on the instep so that all the padding is really coming from your boot. It fit well for the most part, it locked me in. Was it mind blowing? No, do I think there's better out there? Hell yeah, I do. All right, so when it comes to the ratchets, you got your toe, your heel ratchet, they're not uniform. You get a one finger quick release on the heel, you don't have that on the toe. These were sticky right out the box. So what I noticed was that it took a little more effort to release the heel strap and it took even more effort to release that toe strap. Probably because it didn't have a tab that I could grab onto with it. They climbed well, they did break in more as the day went on, they weren't as sticky, but right out the box, that was something that I just noticed. Trusted these more than I did the 50s, but at the end of the day, this is a ratchet design that I'm pretty sure that they were using at the turn of the century. With the high back, nothing mind blowing here. It does have some lateral give to it, but when you drive into it, you can actually feel a little more rigidity down the center. This gives it a little bit more response. Like I said, nothing mind blowing here. Forward lean adjustment, flip it down, slide it down, slide it up, flip the tab back up, and lock it in place. It is a little sticky right out of the box. The overall flex of this binding comes in around middle of the road. You do have a bigger dead spot due to that disc and if you look at this disc it's big it still has a three hole so what that's going to do is give you a bigger dead spot underfoot heavier weight riders rejoice anyone that wants a mini disc with more binding feel sorry you're out of luck you do get some lateral play the straps have some give into it like i said it's around a middle of the road flex overall nothing mind-blowing here the overall ride of this binding can best be summed up as slightly loose. You get a little more lateral rigidity due to the disc, but toe to heel, the straps have some give. It just felt loose. I mean, that's the only way I could describe it. it just didn't feel secure. Who's this binding for? Someone that wants a throwback design binding that's been surpassed by other brands. So back in the day, I was a huge Drake fanboy from the late 90s into the early 2000s. They were the binding that I exclusively rode. They were revolutionary. There was nothing else out there like them. You could just customize them, really dial them in. And that's pretty much where they stayed. Nothing's changed. I mean, the fact that their disc still has a three hole pattern, come on. Come on guys, I can't even mount that on an ICS board. Burton's not even making three hole in there. The heel cup, kind of jank. Everything on this binding just screams, we haven't updated this in over 10 years. It's sad because if you think about where Drake was to where they are now, it's just been this progressive downhill slide. Overall, not really impressed with them. I feel like I kind of wasted a day riding being on these. Binding recommendations. The Union Strata, the Rome Vice, the Bent Metal Joint. This has been my review of the Drake Reload Binding. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own a pair? Are you gonna buy a pair? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this binding. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you wanna support us further, 
Swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Thank mm -hmm. you.